Okay, so I thought let's have a look at the sample problem 1, 3. Even though it's worked out, I thought perhaps I could add a bit more value and just highlighting some things with this um, example problem. Okay, so for the vectors v1 and v2 shown in the figure, v1, v2, so a vector, it's got a certain magnitude and a direction, and this v2 has a certain magnitude and a direction, so they, we have two vectors. Okay, so A, determine the magnitude s of their vector sum. s is v1 plus v2. So determine the magnitude of this vector sum. Okay. So what are we going to do? We're going to use the parallelogram law, parallelogram rule. Okay, so all you do is you complete the parallelogram. There is the one side, the one side, you complete it. And then this line over here is the vector sum. You can also use the head to tail method. If you take this one and you put the tail over there and you will end up with the same thing. Or if you take this vector and you take the tail of that vector and put it there, you'll end up with the same diagram. Now, you've got the diagram, that's great. What? How are you going to get the magnitude? Well, please make sure that you study the law of cosines and the law of sines. Okay, the law of cosines, you can go check it out in the back of the textbook or on Wikipedia or wherever. It simply says you've got this triangle there. Okay, there's, let's look at this triangle. You've got this angle there of 105, 60 plus 45. And what the law of cosines says is that this length squared, or let's put it this way, this length is equal to that length square the square root of okay so s is equal to the square root of that length there squared which is 3 uh, this is 4 squared sorry 4 squared plus that length squared which is 3 squared minus 2 times that length times that length, which is just 3 times 4, right, that's what it's there, got there, times the cos of that angle, 105, okay, so I'm just rewriting this, but not in the squared form, and then we get the magnitude of S is 5.59 5, 5 units, okay, so law of cosines, Please make sure that you understand how it works. Alright, so we've got the magnitude. But now, we want, we want the angle. We want the angle, because that is just the magnitude. We want the vector S. We're looking for the vector S. So we also need this angle alpha here. Okay. So there's this magnitude, and it makes this angle alpha with the uh, positive or the positive x-axis okay how are we gonna get this alpha we use the law of sines the law of sines says the sine of an angle divided by the the magnitude of the the length opposite that angle is equal to the sine of an angle divided by the length opposite that angle okay so the sine of 105 divided by that length is equal to the sine of that angle divided by the opposite length. The sine of that angle divided by the opposite length is equal to the sine of that angle divided by the opposite length. And that's what we have there. So sine 105 divided by the length of S, which is 559, 5.59 is equal to the sine of alpha plus 30 alpha plus 30 divided by the opposite length which is 4 and you go through the calculations and you calculate alpha is 13.76 so one way of saying s as a vector it would be 5.59 at an angle 
at an angle of 13.76. Well, that's not technically the right way to write it. Okay. But we have now determined the magnitude and the angle of this vector S. The magnitude, sorry, this is wrong. That should be the magnitude of S units. Okay, so that, that's the magnitude and that's the angle. All right. Now what's the next one? Write S as a vector. So now we've got a, the magnitude of this vector. We've got the angle of that vector. Now we want to write S. We want to actually write it in vector terms, in terms of unit vectors I and J. Okay. So let's look there. You've got that vector, the magnitude, and you've got the angle. So what, we, what we're going to say is S as a vector is equal to um, the magnitude of S times, so we have that over there would be S cos alpha, right? And that would be your X component. And then that would be S sine alpha and that would be your y component but this and this are just magnitudes so we have to say s s cos alpha times the unit vector i to give it a direction in the x direction and then we've got s s sine alpha that's the magnitude in the y direction you multiply it by the unit vector j okay so what is s it's 5.59 and then cos of alpha is cos 13.76 and then we've got sine 13.76 so we end up with in in unit vector terms we've got this over here 5.43i plus 1.328j okay so this is s in vector form we, we started off like this. We had this uh, V1 and V2, then we got S, and then we got the magnitude and the direction of S, but now we've converted it into vector form in terms of I and J. Now, the next question is, they want a unit vector. Remember, a unit vector is simply a vector pointing in a specific direction with a magnitude of 1. With a magnitude of 1. How do you get that? You take the vector and you divide it by that vector's magnitude. Okay? So there's that vector that we just calculated. And you divide this by the magnitude of that vector. And we get this. This is a unit vector of magnitude 1 pointing in that direction. Okay? So this vector is pointing in the same direction as S, but it has a magnitude of 1. Why is that important? Why is that important? Why did we just do that? Well, you can take S is then equal to the magnitude of S times that unit vector. Okay? So... What is the magnitude of S? 5.59. And what is this unit vector? If we multiply 0.971i plus 0.238j, right, we're going to come get back to this full vector form. Okay? Does that make sense? Finally, uh, what is D? Calculate the vector D. So, Vector D is V1 minus V2. Okay, so what was V1? It was simply 4, the magnitude, <coughs> times, times the cos of that. Right, that was 45. So this would be your Vx, and that magnitude there would be your v, V1x, and that would be V1y. And so V1x is just cos 4 cos 45, and V1y would be 4 sine 45. 
and then this would be multiplied by i and that would be multiplied by j so this is your v1 in vector form and then we need to convert we need to do two things to v2 we need to first convert it into vector form by saying 3 cos 30 i okay so it's got a positive x component and then it's got a negative y component so that's going to be 3 sine 30 because that angle is 30 but it has to be minus because it's in the negative direction but then we flip it because we're saying minus v2 so minus what we just calculated the minus of that okay and what do you do is you subtract the i's from the i's and you subtract the j's from the j's and you should get this value over here as you can see it makes sense if you do the draw the parallelogram you can see it's got a very small x component and a larger y component and the x component is quite small uh, in compared with the y component okay